It's to get signed to a record label. That's why they do it. Underground artists make, it's not that they want to make demonic music. They make demonic music or satanic music or whatever because they're basically telling the record labels like a sales pitch, like, oh, I'm willing to sell my soul to the devil, which means I'm obviously willing to sell my soul to you guys, this immoral company that everyone knows is immoral, right? So it's like a resume. And a lot of them do tap into the whole like, you know, all my demons talk to me, how else can I explain it type stuff. But other people are just blatantly, they have no subtlety to it. Like, um, there's this dude, Sp Sparrow SPV, Sparrow Space Odyssey. That's the, oh look, demons coming now. This is the song right here. This song is fire. I actually really like it. Listen to the lyrics. So it's, it, it's like blatant. They don't, they don't even bother to hide it. And then it's like, like a kid laughing. And, and that's also part of, this is actually crazy. Cause like this stuff is all popping up right now because of end of times talks and all that. So part of satanic occult imagery aesthetic is little kids. That's why all this like Jeffrey Epstein stuff and all that stuff is happening. It's little kids experiencing intense emotions. So laughter is an example, right? And then there's also the other ones that go way, way, way more sadistic. I'm not even gonna get into that because it's YouTube and you never know who's in whose pocket, you know? But that's why they do it. And to a certain extent, I could sympathize with them. It's a brutal game. It's a brutal game. And if you really have what it takes and you truly don't care about the money like that, and all you want is for people to hear your sound, it seems enticing to sign to a record label. It's like, okay, I know all this money stuff is a facade and I know they're gonna scam me and I know they're gonna put me in debt, but at least I can get my name out there and I can get my music out there to millions of people that I wouldn't be able to if I wasn't signed. Your record label doesn't, it isn't just in the in the game of trying to make money from you. A record label making $100,000 from an artist is not worth it to them. It's not worth their time. They have to be making millions and millions and millions from you, which means, Anything that they could possibly do, any offer you could get from a record label will always not only be a bad deal, they will have to factor in how it can be a tremendously bad deal for you. The fact that you got an offer in the first place is proof that whatever they're offering, you can make 10 times that on your own. I mean, it's gonna be a lot harder, of course, but it's the truth. There's a couple guys out here. I'm in Utah right now. And there's a couple guys out here that are in the record label space. And we talk about this stuff. We literally, I'm not going to say their names because it could put, they could put their jobs and other things at risk. But literally it's like, they, they tell me how this is crazy. This is crazy. I'm not going to get into like the crazy stuff they do. Everyone knows the record labels gets artists hooked on drugs. It's possession. It's demonic possession, just getting someone hooked on drugs. They record them also doing crazy stuff. I'm not even gonna get into that. And then they use that to blackmail them into signing bad deals, bad deals that they know, the 360 deals. When people talk about making a deal with the devil, I mean, that's literally what this is. So that's why, in case anybody was wondering, in case, you know, cause you see all these like TikToks are like, yo, what's going on? Why are the concerts nowadays? People just going like, hey, are y'all ready to go to hell? You know, are y'all ready to worship Satan? It's like, if you're willing to sell your soul to Satan, you're willing to sell your soul to an evil employer, to an evil pimp, basically, to a person that's gonna possess you. That's that's what you're, you're offering that to them. So yeah, making satanic music as an underground artist is is a cry to record labels to say, please make me mainstream. If it was subtle and it was like subliminal messaging, then it would be like, wait a second, maybe I shouldn't be listening to this guy. But when people are that blatant about it, it's it's uh, it comes across as just like, oh, they're just doing it for the aesthetic. This is clearly not gonna affect me when really music does affect people. It's just pleasing to the ears and apparently that's good enough. That's standard enough to listen to it. Because record labels know that Music as a business is much bigger than the like, oh, $12 billion a year in like streaming sales or whatever. If you're in the music business, you're in the culture business, you're manipulating culture. And record labels today, I mean, there's like United, Sony, and uh, Warner, which are like doing totally fine, obviously. But a lot of smaller record labels that are not, uh, you know, divisions and subsidiaries of these, or don't have, or, or the three big companies don't have shares in them, a lot of them are bleeding now. And so they're all kind of going like, 
liquidation sale, how can we get as much money out of the people as possible, influence the culture as much as possible while we're still in business, while we still have the artists. And so the artists they're looking for at this point are not, they don't care so much about what an artist can do, they care more about what an artist is willing to do. They're not looking for artists that have good sound. They're looking for artists that will do what they say. That's also why so many of the new guys, you know, the young thugs and the Uzis and all these people, they all push like very, very feminine fashion, really feminine body types, feminine, all that stuff, because to them, it's, um, it's the business of male submission. That's what it is. It's the evil business of getting men in society who should be rebelling, who should be skeptical to submit. And like, okay, I'll pay these people their dues to a certain extent. A lot of them are actually like artist artists and they do have these proclivities to go into these darker realms. So I will, I'll concede that some of these guys are true artists and that they actually do kind of not believe the things they're saying, but they get a kick out of it. And whether or not they were signed or got signed or had any prospects, they would still be making that kind of music. But a lot of them do it just so they can get signed.